this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the difference between hard plaque and soft plaque, which you might not have ever heard of. And then I'm also going to be talking about whether you should be considering a stent for stable angina versus unstable angina. So first of all, this topic came up when I got an article in my inbox, and I thought it was a pretty good one to at least start this topic off. And the idea is that we're American and we like doing things, but in the human body, doing something is not always better than not doing something. So in this article, basically, they took people with stable angina. So stable angina is someone that has chest pain on exertion, meaning they can walk uh, a mile and they get chest pain at half a mile and it stays until they, they reach the mile and they rest. Unstable angina is where you're sitting on the couch and get chest pain. That's a different story. So I'm talking about the person that knows exactly how far they can walk or exercise and then they get chest pain. The idea here is that, oh, stable angina is caused by a narrowing of the blood vessels. So if we go in there and we stent it, we open it, then all of a sudden the patient should feel better. When this study, they did something pretty brave. They took two groups of people. One, they did the, the stenting on, they fixed the artery. And in the other group, they just cut them open and acted like they did a surgery, put them to sleep and everything and then woke them up and the patient didn't know which one they had whether they had the intervention or didn't and it turns out both groups did the same now they also did something med called medical optimization now in the conventional medical world that means they gave them statins and blood pressure medicines and all that and in my world that's a totally different idea we're radically changing the diet we're improving methylation decreasing inflammation all that stuff which um, i've talked about in other videos so what this study is going to prove to you is that getting a stent and getting something done is not always the right answer. So more and more articles are coming out showing that maybe we should be doing less, doing less, we should be optimizing medical treatment. And what I'm gonna tell you is that you can reverse atherosclerosis. I was not taught this in the conventional medical world because there's no drug proven to reverse atherosclerosis. The statins have tried and tried and tried and they've only been they've only done it once and that study was uh, was uh, not reproducible. So, but in the, the functional medicine world, with optimizing diet and decreasing inflammation, we've seen time and time again that patients have reduced their atherosclerosis. In fact, one of my other videos, I go into proving that atherosclerosis is reversible with nutritional changes, and I proved it with a carotid IMT um, a study that my patient had actually done before he'd even came to see me. And he had done it mostly with following Dr. Hyman's protocols, um, like in the Eat Fat Get Thin book, as far as a very heavily plant-based diet, high fat, um, and, and low meat, just mainly plants. And then Dr. Esselstyn, if you choose to follow him, his is very plant-based, lower fat, but still a very successful diet, proven um, with his research to re reverse atherosclerosis. So the few things I want to bring up in this video, one is that getting a stent is not always your best option. Make sure you're talking to your cardiologist, your primary care doctor, and doing your own research of whether you need a stent or not. Number two is we're going to be talking about the difference between hard plaque and soft plaque because you may not know the difference. When someone has a stable angina or when you have chest pain um, that's noticeable at a certain distance, exertional chest pain, that's usually something called hard plaque, which means you've got a tube, everyone's got arteries that are tubes, and over time you've had inflammatory foods, alcohol, whatever else may be going wrong, and you've developed a thickening and narrowing of that artery. And slowly over time that artery has narrowed. This is a process called hard plaque buildup because there's it initially starts as soft plaque but over time your body's trying to attack that soft plaque trying to get rid of it but when it's attacking and it's making more and more inflammation and then that plaque gets harder and harder and harder like a stiff pvc pipe and then basically it's a matter of flow the heart demands more blood flow and that artery can only give you so much blood flow because it's so hard and narrow that then you develop chest pain when you try to push beyond that heart's demand so that's not necessarily good, but it's proven that stenting is not the, the answer there. We'll talk about reversing plaque in general in a minute, but mainly hard plaque is known as calcium buildup inside the plaque uh, or inside the artery wall known as plaque, and this is from inflammation. Cholesterol has been demonized as the plaque causing problem, and if you cut someone open that's had a heart attack, you will find cholesterol red-handed at the scene, but cholesterol was designed as a pothole filler. The pothole was designed to fill the inflammation that you started decades before. So by the time someone has a heart attack, it's because they've had inflammation for years and the cholesterol was trying to fill the patches where the inflammation was causing damage. And you can only deposit so much cholesterol or pothole so many 
um, spots before you have a very messed up road or a very messed up artery. And so then cholesterol builds up enough trying to fix the problem and it actually makes the problem worse. And then your body starts to attack that cholesterol deposit because it's bad, tries to get it out of there. But in the process of attacking it, it actually makes it stiffer and harder. Hard plaque is the hardest thing to reverse. Soft plaque is way easier to reverse, and that just kind of makes sense. Soft plaque is squishier, it's easier for your body to infiltrate and get the stuff out of there with the right tools, whereas hard plaque's so dense and thick that your body can't really take it out, as it needs a hammer and chisel to get that stuff out. But soft plaque is actually more dangerous. So soft plaque, because it's so soft and vibrant, every time a pulse, a, a blood, a, a heartbeat pulse goes through the artery, the artery swells and actually the artery squeezes back down on the fluid. That's what it's supposed to do. That's, that's what it needs to do. When you've got a hard, stiff pipe, the blood pulses through, but it doesn't really expand. The problem with soft plaque is it's still expandable. And each time it expands, it runs the risk of tearing. The second you tear an arterial wall, you clot. That's what's supposed to happen. If you want to know, cut yourself and you can watch that you will bleed for a while and then eventually you clot. Anytime you cut an artery wall, you clot. Well, if you've got a heartbeat going through an artery that's bouncing like this and you've got some soft plaque there and it's got a weak wall, the second a heartbeat pulses through and snaps it open, you have a clot right then and there. When you have a clot, you are officially having a heart attack and that does need a stent. That, that, that one's not arguable. You need a stent, a, a bypass, something to help get around that artery that has um, collapsed or, or um, thrombosed. Um, so, but that's also between you and the hospital, whatever treatment you determine. But that's the big difference between soft plaque and hard plaque. The problem with hard plaque is you get stable chest pain as the artery narrows. The problem with soft plaque is usually there's no symptoms until the heart attack. Oh, I feel perfectly fine. I'll keep drinking my beer and eat my hamburgers and, and french fries until that one day you have a heart attack. And then it's like, well, what happened? I thought I was perfectly fine. My doctor said I had the heart of the heart of a horse or I'm healthy as a horse, whatever the saying is. The problem is that person was developing soft plaque. So how do we test for these things? One, the hard plaque can be tested with a calcium score because it's got calcium underneath. So if you've got an elevated calcium score, it says that you have hard plaque. You most likely also have soft plaque, but that proves the, um, the evidence of hard plaque. You can also do what's called a carotid IMT, which I referred to in my other video. The carotid IMT is an ultrasound of your neck, and they, they measure the microscopic thickness of the carotid artery, and that's what tells you your evidence of any plaque buildup underneath the surface or inflammation in the artery wall, and that can show you both hard plaque and soft plaque. It doesn't really differentiate the two that well until you actually have plaque visualized by the carotid ultrasound. So it's a little bit better at detecting soft plaque or the microscopic changes of soft plaque. So I prefer to use the CIMT as kind of a screening tool to find out if someone has early signs of, of soft plaque. So to back up a little bit and say that again, hard plaque causes stable chest pain on exertion. Soft plaque causes heart attacks here and now. So the best way to test for soft plaque is actually inflammation testing, which your doctor and you may not have ever had done. I've had other videos and you can check them out on inflammation and I go through in grave detail, probably way too boring, about each individual inflammatory test, what they tell you and uh, a little bit about what you can do about it. So I want to address a little bit more about what to do about, about plaque buildup. I've gotten crucified on one of my other videos where I talked about reversing plaque buildup as possible. The whole intention of that video was to prove that reversing atherosclerosis was possible, but I've gotten crucified on comments saying that, well, I didn't tell you what to do about it, how that person reversed their plaque buildup. So here's my delivery of what that person did about it. That person chose to follow Dr. Hyman's plan of heavily plant-based, high fat um, nutritional changes. I don't want to call it a diet because he wasn't on a diet. He wasn't hungry, um, but he changed his food regimen from junk food and fast food to meal planning. Everything was whole foods. Um, he made, he ate a lot of salmon. He made a lot of vegetables and that was his meals. He brought his meals to work. He would eat his lunch at work and then go home and, and eat kind of the same style. Basically just heavy vegetables. 70% of his plate was vegetables and a meat or a protein and then heavy on the oils. Uh, he was actually consuming a good bit of butter at this point, and so we made some changes away from butter into things like ghee and olive oil and avocado oil away from butter, uh, although butter does taste a little better. So the most important thing in reversing atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis is nutritional changes. 
There's several different plans out there, and quite frankly, I don't know who's best at this point. Dean Ornish has a plan that's proven effective, Dr. Esselstyn, which isn't too different from Dean Ornish, and then Dr. Mark Hyman's Eat Fat, Get Thin idea, which is a book he wrote. I prefer the Eat Fat, Get Thin uh, approach because it's easier to eat that way, it's easier to maintain, you're not as hungry, it's less prep work, and I find people are more successful. If a diet is more successful, but it's harder to follow, then you're not going to be that successful. So the most successful diet or nutritional plan for you is going to be the one that you can follow, even if that means baby steps, even if that means just taking out gluten from your diet, but still eating fast food, even if that just means not getting cheese and making that right step towards the, the, the next step in your health. Ultimately, that will not be enough, but any step in the right direction will eventually snowball and roll into the, the op optimal direction for you. So if I can give you any advice, don't ignore hard plaque, don't ignore soft plaque. Understand how the two are treated differently and understand how they're tested differently. Just because you have a heart catheterization by a cardiologist that says, oh, your pipes are fine, there's none of them that are stenosed more than 50%, you're fine, there's none of them that need stenting, wrong. The majority of acute heart attacks or acute myocardial infarctions come from non-narrowed blood vessels. This was shocking when I learned this as a medical student because it just seems to make sense that as an artery narrows, the more likely it is to cause a heart attack, but that's the opposite. Hard plaque doesn't rupture, as we talked about earlier, which is why the statins have some benefit. I'm not a big statin fan if you've watched any of my other videos, but the reason why statins have some benefit, in my opinion, is because statins convert soft plaque to hard plaque. This is a fact. In fact, if you rewind history, it was initially discovered that we could change soft plaque to hard plaque over time with our immune system and inflammation, and we decided that that was a bad thing because hard plaque wasn't able to really go anywhere and it caused more chest pain and angina. And then the statins were invented, and then they were shown that they converted soft plaque to hard plaque, and all of a sudden it's a good thing that statins do this and it's promoted. Well, to me, that's just pharmaceutical nonsense. But it actually is a good thing to convert soft to hard plaque if you're not going to make any dietary changes because soft plaque is more vulnerable to causing a heart attack. But if you're going to make nutritional changes, if you're going to reverse your atherosclerosis, then soft plaque is better because you can reverse it. And you can reverse that, um, that inflammatory nitric oxide deficient endothelium pretty quickly. Um, and stabilize that soft plaque, and then it'll take longer to fully reverse it, but at least you can stabilize that soft plaque so it's not going to cause a, a, a heart attack or a thrombosis. So heart plaques are bad, but statins, if you're not going to make any nutritional changes, can be beneficial. In general, I don't let anyone take statins unless their LDL is over 190, and I actually don't think I have anyone on a statin in my practice at this time because we've been able to manage it with supplements and dietary changes. That's my opinion. You should ask your doctor his opinion, but don't forget that soft plaque and hard plaque are both reversible. Soft plaque is easier. The way to manage or um, a task for soft plaque is the carotid IMT and inflammatory markers. The best way to reverse these plaque buildups is with nutritional changes along with many other things that we do in the functional medicine practice, but the nutritional change that's going to work best for you is the one that you're most likely to follow. Once again, those two plans are Eat Fat, Get Thin by Dr. Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N, and then Dean Ornish or Dr. Esselstyn. Don't ask me to spell Esselstyn, though. Um, I hope this video uh, is helpful. I hope this lets me off the hook for my last video where I got crucified for not saying what the guy did to reverse his atherosclerosis. I would appreciate some feedback and uh, to be let off the hook. Thanks, guys.